Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Ventura County Master Gardener Speaker Series. This talk is one of several of one of a series of virtual talks we have planned until we can resume our in-person meetings around the county. Today's presentation, Native Plants of the California Northern, the Northern Channel Islands, will be about an hour with time for questions. It might go, actually go over a little bit of an hour, Michael said. Um, there will be time for questions at the end, but we ask that everybody stay muted and turn your, um, your video off so that it's not distracting to other people on the call. Um, if you have a question, you can use the chat box at the bottom of your screen and we'll get to, to as many as possible at the end. Our speaker today is Michael Delaney, who is a Ventura County Master Gardener and a Master Gardener site lead for the Channel Islands National Park Native Plant Garden and Nursery. Michael is also a Channel Islands volunteer and work leader on the island restoration projects. He is also a Channel Islands naturalist core member who leads hikes on the islands. Today, he will start with a tour of the native plant garden at the Channel, Channel Islands National Park Visitor Center. We will then look at, several, at four islands and what native plants are on those islands. Um, just so you know, we have several upcoming Zoom classes and in-person drip irrigation classes. I've put the information on how to register or where to go to register in the chat box. So please look in there for information. Um, you can also, I put in the website and our Facebook page. Um, also be sure to contact our Master Gardener helpline. It's, uh, we'll answer any questions for you, gardening, home gardening wise, um, free of charge. So again, everyone, please stay muted and use the chat box for questions and keep uh, your video off. Michael, over to you. Okay, very good. So go to the screen share. Okay. So uh, do I have um, my title slide uh, showing for everybody? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Well, uh, this is actually a fabulous photo of the four Northern Channel Islands, um, Anacapa, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, and in the distance, San Miguel. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute, but first, a message about uh, from the Master Gardeners to check your trees, specifically your citrus trees. Um, there's an insect attacking our citrus trees in California. It is called the Asian citrus psyllid. It carry, can carry a disease called HLB. If your tree gets the disease, it will die in three to five years. Florida's citrus crops have almost completely been wiped out by this disease. Uh, ACP and HLB are here in California, but we're working hard to control it. Citrus growers spray their trees, but it's the backyard trees that are uh, throughout Ventura County and California that are, we are so concerned about. So check the flush or new growth monthly. Uh, if you see uh, what we have on this slide, um, please contact uh, a nursery or, or the helpline for uh, instructions on how to uh, resolve this problem. Please don't uh, move citrus trees uh, out of your area, or citrus out of fruit out of your area, or firewood, uh, as these may contain pests. Uh, slide number two here. Uh, this shows uh, some information on the Master Gardener website. Uh, you can also contact the uh, Master Gardener Helpline, and you can see that um, LA County, Ventura County, Santa Barbara County all have uh, the uh, Asian citrus psyllid. Uh, and so 
Uh, thank you. And you can also ask questions via the chat if you um, have any further questions about that. Okay, but now I'm going to talk about the uh, native plant garden at the uh, Channel Islands Visitor Center, which is seen here in, in the photo. Uh, we have both the native plant garden and a demonstration garden. Uh, the native plant garden is broken up into nine plant communities. And I'm gonna walk through those quickly because what I really wanna talk about is uh, where you can find these plants on the islands. Uh, this uh, native plant garden is uh, open um, year round, uh, 24 hours a day, uh, although it's best in, in daylight. Okay, uh, here is a map. It shows the uh, native plant garden with the nine different areas, and you can see the uh, tan trails that meander through there. Uh, beach and uh, dune is one plant community. Uh, we get, as we go through the islands, you'll see that some of the, there's some beautiful beaches and dunes, whereas other islands have sheer volcanic cliffs. So depending on what island you are, you may or may not have a dune or a beach. Um, the coastal bluff scrub, here we see some beautiful giant coreopsis with some Santa Barbara Island buckwheat, and in the distance is uh, silver lupin. Uh, that plant community. Uh, coastal sage scrub has the uh, different sages, uh, black, uh, purple sage, uh, also uh, sagebrush. Uh, as we continue, maritime cactus scrub. There's cactus on the islands, and uh, in, here you can see the prickly pear cactus with the uh, Santa Barbara Island at, uh, buckwheat and St. Catherine's Lace buckwheat. Okay, uh, valley and foothill grassland plant community. Uh, we'll see that on the islands, uh, grassland is one of the biggest plant communities. However, much of that is non-native and I'll talk about that when we get to it. But here we can see some beautiful, actually sagebrush. Uh, it's a prostrate sagebrush that crawls over the rocks. We've got some silver lupin, some uh, gumweed. Uh, one thing I'll mention is a number of these plants will be in multiple plant communities. Okay, island chaparral. Uh, we'll see chaparral out on the islands. Here we have uh, toyan, cyanosis, um, and uh, mesquite, uh, very popular uh, chaparral plants. Uh, island uh, woodland. Uh, here we have uh, oak. Uh, there's a lot of oak woodlands uh, on various parts of the islands. So we also then get the toyan, uh, some ironwood uh, in, in amongst this woodland. Okay, we also have, uh, we'll see some riparian woodlands, and riparian uh, basically means along streams. Uh, here we have uh, we can see the ironwood, but also the Catalina cherry and uh, some uh, island willow. And finally, we have the island pine forest. What we have, see here is a very large, uh, actually two very large uh, Tory pines, but we also have bishop pines out on the islands. Okay, uh, here are the eight islands of uh, the California Channel Islands off uh, Southern California. I will be uh, discussing uh, uh, native plants on Anacapa, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, and San Miguel. Uh, those are four islands of the National Park. Uh, Santa Barbara Island is also in the National Park, uh, but I won't be uh, discussing that. Uh, it's not accessible right now because of damage to a pier. And, uh, Actually, I have not been on that island. So in the future, I will hopefully have some information about that. Uh, Catalina, most people are familiar with, uh, and San Nicolas and uh, San Clemente Islands are Navy islands and hence uh, restricted. Okay, well, I am going to start with Santa Rosa Island. Uh, it is my favorite island. Uh, I've led lots of hikes on that island. 
Um, and uh, it also has a good diversity, as you'll see. Here we are on one of the bluffs at Becker's Bay. Uh, you can see some of the grasslands. Uh, in the distance is uh, the dunes of Skunk Point. Uh, and then across the channel is uh, uh, Santa, uh, Santa Cruz Island. Okay, here's a map. Uh, Santa Rosa Island is the second largest of the Channel Islands, with uh, Santa Cruz Island being the largest. Uh, Becker's Bay, and uh, you can see where it lists the pier. Uh, there's also a campground. Uh, we will be concentrating in that area. And uh, the next slide uh, shows hiking trails and roads. Uh, and uh, there are four areas. Um, that I'll be uh, walking through, the Cherry Canyon hiking area, Torrey Pines, Lobo Canyon, and then Carrington Point. Each one of these is, is very unique. Uh, and um, I will say that um, for taking a day trip to Santa Rosa Island, probably Cherry Canyon is your best bet because the hike is uh, only three and a half miles a round trip from the pier. Uh, whereas the other hikes are longer uh, and coming, taking a day trip out to, um, to Santa Rosa Island, you're limited on how much island time you have. It can be either three or four hours, depending on particulars of uh, the schedule for that day. I'm going to start uh, first talking a little bit about uh, the ranch area right off the pier and then get into uh, the Cherry Canyon hike. Well, first of all, welcome to Santa Rosa Island. And you can see by the fences and corrals that this was most recently a cattle ranch. Actually, in the 1800s, it was also a sheep ranch. And uh, we will uh, see uh, some of the impacts of that. Uh, just in the ranch area, we get a lot of uh, wildflowers. Uh, here we have uh, wild radish, uh, coastal gumweed, vetch, which is the purple flower, some uh, poppies, there's an island uh, variety of poppies, and then an interesting plant called fiddle neck. Uh, most of these photos were taken in the past uh, month and a half. Uh, I'll mention when uh, some older photos uh, pop in. Okay, so uh, here we're going to go to uh, Cherry Canyon. We're actually going to start on Soledad Road at the junction. This is at the very uh, southeast end of the ranch area. Uh, first off, right at the junction of the Coast Road and Soledad Road, we see some beautiful Indian paintbrush. Uh, there's also some coyote bush and some grasses and a little bit of vetch thrown in here. Uh, this is the most uh, Indian paintbrush I've seen out there. Uh, and interestingly, we had very little rain this year. Santa Rosa is interesting because it is further west than Santa Cruz. Uh, it tends to be cooler, windier, but also gets a lot of fog and a lot of the moisture uh, that the plants get, it does come from that fog. Okay. Oh, there are three varieties of uh, Indian paintbrush on Santa Rosa Island, and a little bit later we'll see one of the other varieties. Okay, walking up the road towards the trailhead, uh, we see uh, island deerweed, California buttercup, uh, yarrow, uh, very common yarrow, and then red monkey flower, which is um, a little hard to see here. There's also some Indian paintbrush and some silver lupin thrown in, but the red monkey flower is relatively rare. Okay, here is again a beautiful bush of silver lupin. This is uh, again right on um, Soledad Road as we're walking towards the trailhead for Cherry Canyon. And just beyond that is a nice uh, grouping of giant Coreopsis. Uh, again, this photo was taken at the end of March. Um, most of the Coreopsis, while still green, uh, probably has lost its flowers. Uh, as you'll see uh, here, the Coreopsis um, is dormant. 
uh, and will spring back to life next spring. Um, commonly called the Dr. Seuss plants, uh, they definitely look dead, but they're just uh, dormant. Uh, another reason I like this photo is it shows the uh, layered structure of the sedimentary rock. These islands were formed underwater, uh, and in some cases you see sheer volcanic cliffs, but in other areas you'll see layers and layers of sedimentary um, deposits. Okay, moving a little further up the road towards the trailhead, we see uh, Santa Cruz Island buckwheat, a very different type of buckwheat. This is only on the northern, uh, northern uh, Channel Islands. And I kept this picture in from a couple years ago just because it's such a nice combination. The red in the middle and upper right is actually a uh, red buckwheat that is uh, predominant on uh, Santa Rosa Island. You rarely see it on, on Santa Cruz uh, or the other islands. Okay, uh, we are now starting on the actual um, Cherry Canyon Trail and we start out in a meadow with uh, lots of island poppies. You can see the stream bed. Um, I've only seen water in that once or twice over the past several years. Definitely not this year. Uh, so we have this beautiful meadow. Uh, in that meadow, um, again, these were taken in March, we have some interesting plants, a wild hyacinth, which is also called blue dicks, golden yarrows, Johnny jump ups, which are an interesting little plant. Um, and then a little further up the canyon, we see uh, a variety of Dudleya. These tend to uh, be on the uh, cliff faces. Okay, coming up the trail, again, silver lupin, uh, you can see this is a kind of a, a mixed uh, uh, scrub area as well as riparian. Uh, you get a lot of the uh, trees in the uh, in the creek bed. You get a lot of willows, uh, toyons, but also on the hillsides uh, we're getting uh, oaks and cherry trees as it is Cherry Canyon. Okay, and in fact, there is the cherry tree. I added the label to it for this talk, uh, right in the middle. And in the background, we have both toyons and uh, oaks, island oaks. Okay, further up the canyon, uh, there's a fair amount of Santa Rosa Island sage. This is very similar to black sage. Uh, we have a lot of manzanita. Um, then there's even some grassland plants on, on the hillsides, uh, shooting stars, star lilies, blue-eyed grass. So you have quite a mix uh, in this one canyon of different plant communities. We get up towards the top of the canyon. We have um, both a beautiful old island oak and a toyon, which uh, is the one that's a little more um, well, not as, as uh, beautiful structure as, as the oak. Okay, once we've left the canyon up onto the bluff, we then see the open range, the grasslands. Um, in the spring, there will be some um, wildflowers in this grassland, but it's mostly non-native grass. 30 years ago, there would have been cattle here with, with cowboys um, as it was a cattle ranch. The trail uh, goes on up the hill and then uh, will uh, turn back towards the coast. And as we're coming down uh, back towards the coastal bluff, here is uh, in amongst the grassland is a beautiful uh, selection of the red buckwheat. Uh, that is uh, Becker's Bay and the pier with the Island Packer boat in the, in the background, but also you can see some of the uh, nice uh, white sandy beaches. Okay, uh, I made a list uh, two years ago um, and uh, of all the plants I'd seen that particular March and I went back and looked at what I saw uh, just this March and a lot of the same plants, uh, a couple new ones, um, but quite a variety. I didn't show all these, but they're out there. 
one nice thing with um, the uh, Cherry Canyon and that area is that we'll have some wildflowers basically year round. And it's because it does get the, uh, the coastal fog, uh, a lot of more moisture and stays cooler. Okay, we are now going to go up the coast road to the Torrey Pines. Um, again, a very unique um, area because the Torrey Pines are only found on Santa Rosa Island or down by Del Mar in San Diego. On the road out, uh, we see the grasslands, but again, here's some more red buckwheat uh, and a coyote bush. Uh, the uh, one I put this in for a couple reasons. You see that the Torrey Pines come right down to the coast road, but uh, Park Service also has very good signage. Uh, so it's easy to find the trails and it's actually difficult to get lost. So one positive thing. So we're going to go up this trail into the Torrey Pines and you can see it is actually a Torrey Pines forest. Um, very dense, beautiful trees, uh, although it hasn't always been this way, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but amongst the Torrey Pines, you also have uh, Manzanita, there's some oaks, and off to the side, a little bit more to the west of this group, is um, a, a grove of ironwood, so you get quite a variety up here. Okay, once you're up there, you have some beautiful views. You can see the coast road down below. Uh, that is actually an area called Black Rock, that um, rock outcropping, uh, and a pretty decent uh, snorkeling area. Okay, and then this uh, is uh, some new growth, and that's the exciting part. After the cattle were, were removed, the Torrey Pines have had a very significant uh, growth spurt, a lot more trees, a lot of young trees. This is um, by an old ranch road, and uh, it's very exciting to see that uh, the um, Torrey Pines Grove ha is expanding. If we turn around and look off to the south, however, that is the grazing land, uh, grasslands, again, mostly non-native grasslands that go all the way to the south end of the island in the distance. Okay, uh, we're going to now move to the northern shore. Uh, if you uh, hike from, uh, from the pier area out on the Smith Highway, uh, basically a, a dirt road and you're up in, in, in the, again, the uh, grazing area, the grasslands, you'll drop into Lobo Canyon. I'll mention that from the pier, this is uh, close to a 10 mile hike. Um, so it's difficult to do on a day trip. If you're camping out in Water Canyon, uh, you have to add another three miles. So it turns out to be a 13 mile round trip. Uh, so it's, it's a good hike, uh, but definitely worth it. Okay, this is right at the trailhead. I'm standing on the, on the Smith Highway uh, looking, this is inland. Uh, so we're seeing um, both uh, some beautiful large old oaks, uh, an elderberry off in the lower right, uh, lots of other uh, shrubs, um, some chaparral. Um, and uh, then if we turn and go down into uh, Lobo Canyon, uh, we see why it gets so much moisture is you can see up the, uh, the fog. This is again on the North shore. Um, is uh, there's all sorts of moss in the trees. Uh, we've got uh, kind of a, a riparian area, but also uh, we get uh, the coastal scrub and, um, and chaparral all mixed in here. Um, so we've got toyons, we've got oaks. Uh, down in the canyon, we get willows and cottonwood. You can even see a little bit of golden yarrow in the lower, uh, lower right. Uh, a very very beautiful canyon. Uh, and uh, you can see that the water, uh, this, there's a fair amount of coyote bush in there and some uh, sagebrush. Um, 
the canyon hike is uh, is very doable, but you in some cases are rock hopping, uh, and you get uh, some beautiful vistas. Uh, there's a lot of willows down in the in the canyon there, but you can see how the water has cut a path all the way to the beach. Uh, and uh, and uh, you can also see that there's grass signs above that also um, uh, come down into the canyon. Uh, and down at the mouth of the canyon, to right close to the beach, we get into more of a grassland and marshy area. Uh, and this has lots of um, reeds and uh, rushes uh, amongst other, other plants. So very exciting hike. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the more popular ones on, on Santa Rosa, especially for the campers. Okay, um, now uh, the last hike on, on Santa Rosa. And again, this is probably best doable from camping or um, a long day trip. Uh, and that is out to Carrington Point. Um, the, there's, uh, uh, you can take the Smith Highway or there's an alternate route, but basically initially you're looking at grasslands and grazing area, but then you cross actually through a gate and to an area that didn't have grazing, at least uh, in recent history. And it, it turns out to be very different. It's, it's on the, again, North Shore, it's getting lots of moisture and it's actually a sandier soil. So this is actually in August uh, and you're going to see the incredible um, wildflowers out here. We have the California buttercup, some silver lupin, which is not blooming at present, and even a little uh, uh, sea pink thrown in there. Uh, uh, again, uh, a little further on, we have poppies, uh, sea pink, and uh, just lush fields of this. Uh, some other interesting plants, Indian pink in, in a batch. Um, I mentioned uh, the Indian paintbrush. This is a unique uh, yellow Indian paintbrush that you get out on Santa Rosa. You can also get this on, on Santa Cruz Island. And, and then some more of the sea pink and golden yarrow. Um, and uh, again, some more of the silver lupin, which is not blooming at present. Okay, so that closes out uh, Santa Rosa Island. We're now going to uh, go back to Santa Cruz Island. Santa Cruz Island is, is in, it's the largest island uh, in the Channel Islands. Uh, but the western two thirds is actually owned by the Nature Conservancy. The Park Service owns the um, the eastern one third, uh, and that that is where uh, island packer boats will will take you either to Scorpion Anchorage or Prisoners Harbor. Uh, Scorpion is uh, the most popular destination. It's just a little over an hour out of Ventura also has the largest campground uh, of the uh, uh, national park in the Channel Islands. Okay, so uh, this is uh, again the hiking map. Uh, I'll start out with uh, Scorpion because that's where a lot of folks will go. Um, and in there I'll look at both Scorpion Canyon, uh, which uh, when you get off the boat, you're basically walking up Scorpion Canyon, but then also uh, the Cavern Point or Bluff Trail, uh, as you'll see right along the cliffs. We'll see some of the same plants uh, as we've seen on Santa Rosa. Uh, and then um, actually we'll, we'll venture over to Prisoner's Harbor and uh, look at the Pelican Bay hike. This is actually on Nature Conservancy property, but when you go out on Island Packers and sign a waiver, they allow you to hike uh, out to Pelican Bay, and it's definitely well worth it. Okay, well, uh, ranching history on Santa Cruz Island is a little different from Santa Rosa. Um, because Santa Cruz Island is so large, there was a uh, main ranch in the Central Valley 
which is in Nature Conservancy property now. But then there were these satellite ranches and, and the one at uh, Scorpion Ranch is one of the satellite ranches. So there's, uh, you can see a lot of the ranch equipment, a um, couple of the buildings, the building on the, the whitish building on the right, two-story building actually has a museum uh, with a lot of ranch history in the lower section. We're first going to walk up the uh, canyon um, and uh, in the vicinity of the campground, again, we have some uh, Santa Cruz Island buckwheat, uh, but we also have uh, uh, several I Santa Cruz Island ironwood trees. A little further on, we have the Catalina cherry. In this case, it's right next to the trail. And I got this photo with cherries that hadn't ripened yet. And uh, they're not really edible, although maybe the foxes like them. Uh, further up, uh, again, uh, the at Scorpion Ranch, it's uh, a canyon that has a, a stream bed. Uh, this is uh, a large uh, grouping of morning glory filling the st stream bed but also off to the uh, opposite side of the creek from the trail. Going further up the canyon um, you can see that there's a lot of coyote bush we'll also see some toyans but this was an interesting plant that I had never come across before it's called uh, oyster plant. Um, it's invasive. Uh, it looks like dandelions, but those uh, puffballs are about the size of a tennis ball. So you can see it's a problem in that you, it will disperse seeds over a wide area. There have been a number of efforts to try to remove it, but um, it's going to be a long haul to get it out. A little further up the canyon, um, again, we can see some coyote bush, uh, some grasses, uh, mostly non-native grasses, uh, some uh, toyon. So we're getting into a little bit of a, a chaparral, uh, some uh, uh, coastal scrub. And a little bit of the yellow out there is unfortunately black mustard, another invasive plant that's hard to get rid of. Okay. This is an aerial photo. I, I put it in just so you could uh, get a good view of um, what that area looks like uh, around Scorpion and uh, that whole eastern end of uh, uh, Santa Cruz Island. It's also why it was uh, used for grazing sheep for, uh, oh, at least 100 years. Uh, well, Channel Islands National Park became a national park in 1980. The Park Service didn't get control of this section uh, until 1997. And so um, just um, 25 years ago, there were still thousands of sheep. And it is taking uh, quite a while for uh, this area to recover. So. Uh, again, from uh, basically where you get off the boat, uh, the, the uh, welcome kiosk, um, the Cavern Point Trail uh, heads up up to the bluff. And uh, we see uh, in amongst the grassland, uh, very thick lemonade berry patches. There's also some golden brush and island buckwheat. Uh, I believe, as we'll see, a lot of the island buckwheat was um, part of a restoration project here. This is close to the uh, bluff trail. Uh, we still have a lot of non-native grasses. So this is where the, the sheep would graze. Uh, interestingly, uh, a plant that's on most of the islands, uh, whorehound, it's a, in the mint family. You can actually buy uh, English uh, candy. This plant, uh, uh, I believe, originated in, uh, in Europe uh, or is also out there, but um, it, uh, there's a candy made from this. Okay, 
So uh, by Cavern Point, uh, there we'll see uh, the cliffs. We see a lot of the Dudleya. Uh, you can see in, in this case, it's actually blooming. Uh, and uh, then some of the island buckwheat, a little cyanosis, some yarrow, and uh, Indian paintbrush. And this is all pretty close to the cliff edge. Uh, and again, here you see um, from the bluff, this is some giant Coreopsis, and we're looking uh, a couple hundred feet down into the, into the water. A beautiful water, though. Great for kayaking. Okay, so now we're going to move over to Prisoner's Harbor uh, and uh, hike along the uh, Pelican uh, Bay Trail. So when you get to Prisoner's Harbor, again, here's more of the morning glory, uh, some giant Coreopsis. Again, these photos are a couple weeks old. Uh, this is an interesting grouping of giant Coreopsis, some uh, plant the uh, kind of lighter green, which is uh, Northern Island Hazardia, uh, and, and then a variety of other shrubs. Again, this is just right close to the beach on a north facing hillside. So it stays, tends to stay more moist. We get into the, onto the trail and uh, we have um, a variety of, of chaparral, uh, lots of Manzanita, um, scrub oaks. Uh, there's some really interesting canyons. Here's uh, again some more of that Northern Island Hazardia, but also some Coreopsis. Uh, and this is all in a kind of an oak woodland in these canyons. Uh, this is uh, another canyon not far, far beyond where uh, we have uh, a nice uh, grouping of California hedge nettle, which gets some beautiful um, uh, blue flowers. Uh, again, it's in a in a stream bed under the oaks. Um, we're looking across a canyon, uh, and this is uh, Santa Cruz Island ironwood grove. And then a little more to the left, we can see. Uh, both some bishop pines as well as quite a number of oaks and other uh, chaparral. And then a little further along, you, you get to where you can uh, see the uh, Pelican Bay. It's a, one of the uh, better anchorages for private boats. But when you get down to actually the Pelican Bay area, we'll find a lot of non-native plants like eucalyptus that were brought in by the uh, by the ranchers. Okay, um, moving on to San Miguel Island. San Miguel Island is the furthest west of the chain. Uh, it's not something to do on a day trip other than once a year island packers dedicates a boat and it goes out uh, straight out there uh, leaving at eight in the morning and getting back usually at six or seven, you get about three hours on the island. And I did that two years ago, and hence we're going to look at some of the um, uh, area around San Miguel Hill. Uh, San Miguel is also interesting because it is still owned by the Navy. Um, historically, it had a sheep ranch on it, but in the uh, Cold War era and the 50s and 60s, the Navy um, reclaimed it, and it was a bombing range. Because of that, uh, if you go on to the island, you're um, constrained to stay around the beach or uh, uh, ranch area, um, unless you have a, a ranger or a naturalist uh, to go out uh, on those trails. And that's because they're concerned about the possibility of unexploded ornaments, although they've done quite a good job of, of, of uh, screening that. So let's take a quick look. Here we're uh, at uh, Kyler Harbor Beach, um, and you can see that the island packer boat is anchored out there and there is not a pier. So you actually have to go ashore onto the beach in a skiff, which 
takes a lot of time if you've got 100 people or 150 people on the boat. Um, and uh, so ni nice dunes. Uh, as you climb up from the beach, you're going up a, a canyon. Um, the island is, so from the beach up, up to the uh, ranger station and campground, it's about a 500 foot elevation up this canyon. Uh, we see uh, some, uh, these particular photos were taken in October. Uh, we can see that the Coreopsis, while still green, is not flowering. You also see some, uh, a bunch of other uh, scrubs, some silver lupin, some grasses. Uh, again, the Coreopsis is pr predominantly dormant. Uh, we all have a lot of coyote bush up here. Uh, but we also have some interesting other plants. This is up on San Miguel Hill where we have uh, a variety of low shrubs. Uh, interestingly, San Miguel Island uh, normally is extremely windy and hence you don't see a lar lot of large uh, bushes. Um, either that or they're bent way over. Um, it's not uncommon to have uh, 40, 50 uh, knot winds out there. Uh, so you can also get a lot of, of blowing uh, sand. This island has, has recovered uh, from the sheep because it has been over, what, 60 years since there were sheep on this island. So it has had a fair, fairly decent recovery. This is uh, basically on the top of San Miguel Hill, looking out to the west. Um, and you can see there's um, still not a lot of growth. Um, uh, while it gets fog, it, it also gets that heavy wind. And this is out looking towards the uh, Caliche uh, forest, which is out in one of those uh, dune areas. Okay, I'm going to finish up with uh, Anacapa Island. Uh, you can take a boat from uh, Oxnard Harbor out to uh, Landing Cove on Anacapa. Uh, Anacapa is interesting because it's basically three islands in one. You have West Anacapa, Middle Anacapa, and East Anacapa. The uh, lighthouse and Landing Cove are on East Anacapa, and that's where the boats will take you, but you cannot uh, access Middle or West Anacapa. Uh, there is a hiking trail, um, trails uh, on East Anacapa. It, um, you can hike pretty much the whole island in two hours. Uh, it is very scenic um, uh, and, and very interesting in that it's uh, a lot of volcanic rock. Uh, there is a little visitor center um, and uh, this is where hikes would uh, kick off. It's kind of at a junction of trails. You can see in the background, it's, it's um, dried grasses there. Uh, this is, must be late in the season. Uh, this is looking from the lighthouse. Uh, the buildings are uh, from when the Coast Guard built the lighthouse and, and they actually had uh, families living out there. Um, unfortunately, uh, the Coast Guard brought out African ice plant, which, um, pretty much took over the island and destroyed a lot of uh, native bird habitat. Uh, the, uh, all the white spots you see in this photo are uh, Western gulls, uh, where, and they actually nest out there. Um, this is um, uh, two uh, gull eggs, uh, interesting how they're spotted. Uh, in amongst um, a coastal gumweed. Uh, we saw a little bit of this out on um, Santa Rosa Island by the ranch, and there's a lot of it on, on Anacapa. And a little bit later, here we have the uh, chicks. Again, initially, they come out spotted just like their shells, um, and uh, quite a variety of, um, of uh, vegetation. Um, and I'll try to remember what those yellow flowers are. Um, but there was also some Coreopsis that's already uh, started to go dormant. The chicks are um, born in 
uh, actually right about now. So if you go out to Anacapa, for example, this weekend, you may have 20,000 gulls and a lot of chicks and the noise is incredible. Um, the gulls are very protective. Um, the chicks uh, and their nests are all over the place. Uh, and so it becomes a little bit of a challenge hiking around uh, in the springtime out there. Okay, um, because of that African ice plant uh, that it has destroyed a lot of uh, native bird habitat, there has been an ongoing activity uh, to uh, reestablish uh, the, uh, the native bird habitat um, for particular some, not the gulls, but some other nesting seabirds that use both uh, Anacapa and Santa Barbara Island. The uh, reason these are um, uh, good for um, bird habitat is that there is no um, water on these islands and hence no foxes. And no foxes, the birds can nest without being uh, molested. Uh, we see in amongst uh, these plants, uh, Island Mallow has done a great job at uh, restoring a lot of the habitat. Um, you can see there's a nursery out there and they go grow a variety of plants um, that are then, um, we typically pre-COVID would bring high school students out to do a lot of the planting and weeding. So that's an ongoing activity. Uh, this photo from the east western side of the island looking towards the lighthouse in the spring where uh, we see the giant Coreopsis. Okay, well, that uh, wraps up my talk. Uh, and here's an advertisement for um, Master Gardeners. Uh, if you go to this site, uh, you can sign up to be a Master Gardener for the class of uh, 2022. Okay, uh, questions? Do you want me to read from the, um, there's one question in the chat box. Okay. And it is asking, are there any volunteer opportunities on San Clemente? Uh, so I actually spent a fair amount of time out at San Nicolas Island with uh, Channel Islands Restoration, uh, on a nonprofit that worked with the Navy. Uh, there's a, an equivalent group out of San Diego that uh, does restoration work out at San Clemente. Um, I know Channel Islands Restoration had done that in the past. Pretty much COVID has stopped all of that, uh, and it's not clear when that will restart. I'm not, do not know specifically who is currently doing the restoration work out at uh, San Clemente. Okay, that's all I see in the chat box. Okay, well, actually, I talked faster than I thought I would, so we're, we're done in under an hour. <laughs> all right, does anybody have anything else they'd like to ask? Michael? Nope, okay. Oh, well, wait, thanks. one more, one, one question. More. Are all walking Wait, are all trails walking trails or can you ride a bike? Uh, no bikes allowed on uh, the islands in the national park. Okay. It would be nice to have mountain bikes out there, but the concern is, especially like at Santa Rosa, you could be miles away from uh, the pier area. And if there's any kind of accident, uh, there's nobody to help you. Yeah, so that, that's the, the reason I've heard why they haven't. Uh, plus, there's also the concern about um, um, damaging the ecosystem. Um, okay, another question. Where would be the best island and hiking trail to take grandsons that are seven and 10 years old? 
So if you go into uh, Scorpion uh, on uh, Santa Cruz Island, it's, it's just over an hour out of Ventura, so it's not as long of a boat ride. It tends to be a little less rough um, in general. Um, you can hike flat. Um, you can hike up hills. You have a little bit of variety. You have a beach. Um, you have a little museum. You're more likely to see the island fox at Scorpion than out on some of the others. You get more time on the island as well. Um, also at Scorpion, you can arrange for uh, guided kayaks. Ooh. So, um, I prefer Santa Rosa Island because of, of the diversity, but it's a much longer boat ride. Can get rough out there. Doesn't bother me. I'm, I've been sailing for 50 years, but some people doesn't sit well with. And you get less time on the island, unless you're camping. Okay, she says, thank you. That was from Bonnie Brown. Okay. She says, thank you. Hey, Michael, for folks who are interested in maybe getting their hands on some of these plants, could you maybe share a little bit about plant sales and any plans you may have for future plant sales? Sure. Uh, so the um, Channel Islands at, at the Visitor Center, uh, there's the Native Plant Garden. We have a team of master gardeners and other volunteers who maintain a nursery in, in Ventura Harbor that supports the, the garden. Um, but also we have periodic plant sales. We just had one um, uh, at the end of uh, April. We will have additional plant sales. Um, I know we'll have one in, a, in the fall. We're not sure if we'll have one in, in midsummer. Uh, we have to assess the uh, availability of plants. The last plant sale was very successful and so our inventory is down a wee bit. Um, but we'll uh, have it posted on the Master Gardener um, uh, main page of, of events uh, and so uh, if you check that periodically uh, you'll see when we have a plant sale. Great, thank you. Okay, doesn't look like we have any more questions at this time. Okay. Well, thank you all for, uh, for coming to the talk. Thank you, Michael.